Happy Palm Sunday, Aspire Church. We're so thankful that you can watch us wherever you are right now. And uh, we just want to, right up front, say thank you to everything you're doing to help our community. You know, in the last two weeks, you've given $1,800 to help six families in need. You know, one specific family we were able to help this week. The mom is a single mom, and she lost her job. And, and she has two children that go to our elementary school where we meet. And she lost her job, and we were able to help her and her father, the kid's grandfather, uh, contracted uh, COVID-19. And uh, it doesn't look like he's going to make it. You can pray for this family right now. They are in, in dire straits. They don't know us, and you don't know them, but God knows them. And when you give through Aspire Church, it helps so many people. 
So I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for you stepping up to the plate and helping. In addition, uh, this past week, uh, you gave double what you typically give in tithes and offerings. That says so much about you. It reminds me of the Macedonian church when out of extreme poverty, they gave. And uh, that just says something about you and your walk with Jesus. When you can see things on the surface, on the earth, that doesn't make sense, that, that's out of whack, and you trust the Father, and by faith you give, that says something about how you're doing spiritually. And so we had three new families that stepped up and began giving for the first time this past week. So this is not a plea for money. It's really the opposite. It is, it is just commending you about your giving and to keep going with God. Keep trusting. You have told me so many stories about how God has blessed you in multifaceted ways this week. And I believe it is tied to how we live with our generosity. In this day and age, you've given. You know, our country has been giving this, this week. But I believe that is just a, a part of the puzzle. What we need is the church, the church of Jesus Christ giving like they've never given before. And you've done it. So good job. Uh, today we're going to, uh, to begin our, our message uh, in Matthew 6. And today we actually conclude the Lord's Prayer. And so as we begin today, I would just like you to bow your head wherever you are, get a Bible, gather around with your family, and we're going to go through this message. And then we're going to follow up with some, some music. And I'll come back with a couple of announcements later. So let's bow our head and pray. Dear Father, we thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you that you're taking care of us. As we learned this week, that you're giving us our daily bread. You're taking care of us daily. And Lord, today we lift up these families, these six families we've helped. And Lord, specifically this family, the single mom that has lost her job. And we lift up this gentleman that is, that is struggling right now with his health, Lord. Lord, would you heal him? Lord, I, I just pray that you will continue to use our church to meet the needs in this community that you've placed us here in Tucson. Lord, would you use this word in a powerful way to speak to others right now in your name, Jesus. Amen. So Matthew 6, it's a passage we see recited over and over and over, ball games or before some event and it goes like this. It's, Jesus is telling us how to pray. He says, pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. You know, as, as I was reading this prayer, some of you may have been surprised that I kept going. This second part actually describes part of the Lord's Prayer. Many times we stop right there, deliver us from evil. But in verse 14, Jesus keeps going, talking about forgiveness. You know, he starts at this 10,000 foot level talking about the, the kingdom of God and heaven coming to earth. And then he drops right down to where we are living with forgiveness. That's a tough topic, I know. We're going to address it a little bit today. I believe it is, a, it is the most important topic that we have as Jesus followers as it relates to other people. Most of the time when I talk to people that are struggling in their life, about 95% of the time, it has to do with unforgiveness, marital issues, addictions, anger issues, relational issues. It can be stemmed back to a unforgiveness matter that could go back even 20, 40, even 50 years. So today, what Jesus does in our prayer, and he's saying, you need to pray this every day because there are always people that we need to forgive. And he just drops right down to where we live. Maybe right where we're living with this this uh, quarantine. We're in close quarters with, with our, our spouses. We're in close quarters with our kids. And there should be a lot of forgiveness and a lot of apologizing that's going on on a regular basis. Forgive. Sorry. Those are tough words. 
You know, Elton John has that, that song about sorry seems to be the hardest word. Don Henley, one of my favorite musicians, he says that uh, forgiveness is really getting down to the heart of the matter. It gets right to where we are. I agree with Don Henley. Right where we are is forgiveness. And if, if, if we have unforgiveness in our hearts, that will have ramifications in so many different areas. So Jesus says you need to pray that we forgive. Forgive us our debts as we've also forgiven our debtors. Debt, what's, what's this term debt? You know, sometimes we hear this term debt mentioned in this passage or trespasses. And we have this idea that somebody broke into our house or debt as it relates to money. Debt is really somebody wronging you. It's sin. So when it says forgive, forgive us, it's really saying, would you forgive my sin? God, would you forgive my sin? Forgive the wrongs that I've done against you. And Lord, it says here, Jesus says, and you need to go to the Lord and you need to say, and and I want to forgive others. I not only want to receive forgiveness, but I need to forgive others. That's basically what he's saying because the descriptor here in verse 14, he really describes what he's talking about with forgiveness. He says, for if you forgive others their trespasses or their sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So he's saying this intimacy with the Father is linked to how you forgive others. How in the world could we come to God and say, God, would you forgive my sins? Oh, by the way, but don't forgive the sins of, of somebody that's wronged me. God's saying, no, 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 that's not how it works. In my kingdom, it's free. Forgiveness is, is free and it's given to all. First of all, you need to know this. Right where you are, you have been forgiven. Doesn't that sound great? It's truth. You have been forgiven. Jesus died to forgive. He died so that you could live. He took all of your sins and took it to the cross. You know, as we move forward to Holy Week right now, it is important for us to know that Jesus fixed his eyes on the cross to go to the cross to take your sin and my sin and put it on himself so that we could be free from this sin. You've been forgiven. That's important to know as we move forward. Forgiveness is not just for you. Matthew 6, 4, and 5 says this, For if you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. And thirdly, we are ambassadors of forgiveness. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All of this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. You know, we have one thing to do here on this earth. That is to reconcile others to Christ. That's our ministry. How in the world can we carry out the ministry of reconciling others to Christ if we aren't willing to forgive others? It's impossible. We have to not only ask God for forgiveness, but extend that forgiveness to others. That is the ambassador that we are. That is the minister that we are as we give reconciliation to others. God has reconciled me to himself through Christ. And we are to, number one, forgive the offender as Jesus forgave you. Forgive the offender as Jesus forgave you. Colossians 3.13 says this, Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. Forgive as God forgave you. So Jesus is just saying, through me, extend that forgiveness to others. Now I know that that seems impossible. It, it actually is. In our own human standing, in our own human ability, we don't have the ability just to forgive the people that have really hurt us. And I, I mean really hurt us. Not just somebody that, that took something of ours, but really hurt us, damaged us. People that we love. There's, there's people in areas of abuse. And there's, there's people that, have, that you're listening right now and you've been abused. You've been hurt. You've been verbally abused. You've been physically abused. There's been people that have had their spouses walk out on them. There are some of you listening today that you don't know your mom. You don't know your dad because they left when you were young in age and you don't even know them. And 
How in the world do I forgive them of that? Others of you that have lost jobs because somebody threw you under the bus and you lost the job and it wasn't even your fault. How do you possibly forgive people like that? Every single week we go through instances where it's difficult to forgive and how in the world do we do that? And you know, Jesus gave us that power as well in him. You know, Vance Pittman, a good friend of mine said this, that the standard of forgiveness seems impossible. And it is. If I'm trying to do this on my own, but the reality is, Jesus doesn't simply invite me to live this way. He desires to live this way through me. So if you're trying to do this on your own, it's impossible. But if you allow Christ to live in and through you, forgiveness will happen because he's already done it. Here's some things about forgiveness that you may have forgotten or may have never heard. How do you forgive us? Freely. It's free. Some of you are thinking about maybe a sin or two that you think there's no way in the world that, that God could forgive me. It's free. We didn't, have, we didn't deserve this. It wasn't something that you do by works. It's free. And it's complete. He, he forgave us completely. And he, and he forgave us forever. Isaiah 43, 25 says, I, even I, am the one who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins. God says, I will not remember your sins. There are passage upon passage. As far as the east is from the west, I'll put your sins on, the, on my back so you, you can't even see it. That's what he's saying. It's, listen, I can't even, I don't see your sin anymore because of what Christ has done. I'll forgive you. It's freely, it's completely, it's forever. Forgiveness releases power in this kingdom like none other. It releases power in your life. It releases power in the lives of others. Secondly, not only are we to forgive the, the offender, we're to release the offender. We're to release the offender. Now, before we go any further, those of you that are watching me and you're listening, releasing the offender, just by me saying that, takes you back to a place when you were hurt. And before you shut me off, before you say, you don't have a clue what you're talking about, Pastor, I just want to tell you, I know exactly, I know exactly the pain of being hurt. I've been hurt deeply in my life. I did a message uh, back on uh, March 25th, you can go back and look at it, and I've been hurt deeply, just like you. Was it the same type of pain? Not at all. I'm not saying I know exactly what you're going through, but I'm telling you, I know the pain of being hurt. And to think about releasing that offender, it, it even, even by me saying it draws up some emotions in my heart. So I want you to know, forgiving is about releasing the offender. But here's some things about forgiveness I think we just need to, to settle right now before we move forward, forward. Forgiveness does not let the offender off the hook with God. You know, sometimes we think, if I forgive this person, I, I'm going to let them off the hook with God. No, 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 you don't have that power. You have no power to, to wield the power of the divine. You're not letting them off the hook with God. You're actually letting yourself off the hook from the pain that you've been, you've been feeling. You know, this pain can grip you in such a way that can lead to so many things. The bitterness and the anger that you feel. Broken relationships. When you don't forgive, it'll hold on to you more than, more than holding on to them. Most of the time, the people that have offended us aren't even thinking about you. But you're thinking about it. And it causes bitterness and anger and causes, uh, causes things like restlessness and sleeplessness and depression. Addictions. You know, most alcoholics that I've talked to aren't drinking alcohol because they love the taste. They're alcoholics because it numbs the pain. Forgiveness. Forgiveness will release you from the pain that you're trying to fill with pills and alcohol and other things. It'll release you from that. This will allow God to work in and through you in a powerful way. Secondly, forgiveness does not mean that what they did was right. It doesn't let them off the hook with God. Forgiveness also doesn't mean that what they did was right. We're not saying that what they did was right. It was wrong. 
And also, forgiveness doesn't mean that you're going to forget. When I talk about forgiving people, sometimes people say to me, there's no way in the world I can forget this. Well, the Bible doesn't say you, you have to forget. But it does say you need to forgive in the power of Jesus Christ. And forgiveness doesn't mean that you have to remain in that relationship. Sometimes the best thing you can do is to separate yourself. As a matter of fact, I encourage you to do that if there's an area of abuse going on. It doesn't mean you're just going to suck it up and stay in it. No, forgiveness doesn't mean you have to stay in the relationship. But it means that you, you forgive that person so it's, it's lifted off of you and you're allowing God to work in that person's life. That's what it means. It doesn't mean you have to stay in that relationship. Jesus, I believe, is saying with this prayer, it's not so much changing the relationship this way. What it's really doing is changing your heart. He's saying in this quiet place as you pray daily, I want you to release those people. I want you to forgive and to release those people. This is really about your heart. He really is, is doing some heart surgery for you. He's giving you some, some things to, 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 to pray about that will allow you to live free and to liberate you from this pain that you're going through. Luke 4, 18 says, He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives. He wants to release you. And He also wants to make sure that you know that others are released. 2 Corinthians 5, 19 says, God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself, not counting their trespasses against them. Before we think about names of people that have hurt us and think about all those, those things that sometimes grip us and cause us sometimes to just say time out on messages like this. I just want you to think about this. Isn't it powerful to think that in Christ going to the cross, what he's doing is he's saying, I want the world to be free of all these, this sin. I want you to be free of all the death that comes with sin. I want you to be free from all that. Yes, for a time you're going to live in a world that has fallen and surely we've seen that this week, right? We live in a fallen world, but he says, I'm going to set you free from that. I'm going to establish you in a new kingdom. Your home is going to be in heaven. And even though you're going through a temporary challenge right now here on earth, know this, you can live free from sin now and forevermore. And that is in Jesus Christ giving his life for us on the cross. He wants to release the offender and he wants you to release that offender so that you can move forward. And third is this, bless. He wants you to bless the offender. You say, well, now you're, you're, you're going to a new level. You know, I'm not saying you do this overnight. This may be a, a matter of years for you. But you get to a point where you forgive. And then you get to a point where you release them. And then there'll be a day. I believe it. There'll be a day when you bless them. Not because that's something you work up in your heart, but because you see the power of blessing. As you bless others, there is a blessing that comes with that on you. Romans 12, 14 and 18 says this, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. 17, verse 17 of 12 says this, Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. You see, Jesus is saying, bless rather than curse. Bless rather than curse. Well, let's look at a curse first. What is a curse? Curse is wanting destruction to come to somebody. You want them to pay for what they did. You want a curse to come on them. You, what, you, they've wronged you and you want destruction upon them. You want destruction upon their marriage. You want destruction upon their family. There are some people that have hurt you so bad. You want them to live, but you want them to live in pain and agony and destruction. That's a curse. It means you express yourself with mean, hangry, angry, hateful words, either through texting or social media. You want to bring a curse upon them. And when we say curse, it's not like this, some type of a witchcraft thing. Many times we curse people with what we say to them, what we text them, how we inadvertently use Facebook to hurt somebody. You've seen those Facebook posts. You've seen those tweets from people. 
where we go around about and we bring, we bring hundreds of other people in with us to curse somebody. And God says, no, that's not what you do. The opposite of that is bless. Bless is the opposite. You want the person that is offended to hear a word from you, a word of blessing that leads that person to become better, to flourish, to experience the same life in Christ, the same forgiveness in Christ that you've experienced. You want them to be blessed. Is that possible? Not in your own power, but in Christ it is. This week is Holy Week, and we remember this life of Jesus as He goes to the cross. And as He stretches out His arms, and he, He's about to ready to breathe His last, He says this, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. At the beginning of His ministry, He's teaching us how to pray. And he lives these three years and he's showing us what it means to forgive, what it means to release captives. And then he goes to the cross and one last time he says, for anybody, anybody there that's listening and for us that's listening 2,000 years later, he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Jesus is saying to you today, I went to the cross. I want you to know you're forgiven. And I go to the Father and I intercede on your behalf. And I, and I pray that you understand the depth of my love for you. I want to release you from the pain that you feel in your heart. From the pain that you've caused on others. I forgive you. I want you to forgive others. If you struggle with forgiveness, if you're struggling with this message, I want you to stay there for a little while this week and I want you to allow this struggle to take you to depths with Jesus that you've never felt before. Allow this struggle to take you deeper with Christ. Hey, you've got time. We've used our time over the last month in so many weird ways. I've seen people just begging Netflix to put on one more docu documentary or one more show so they have some time. And God is saying, listen, God is saying to us, church, America, wake up. Go into your quiet room and pray. Use this time to, to get right with me. Use this time to forgive others. How long is this going to last? I don't know. But I do believe, church, that God's using this opportunity for us to get right with Him. You see, this prayer, this prayer, forgiveness, is not so much about others right now. I know some of you are thinking, well, what do I do? Would I call somebody? Do I write a letter to them? It's really right now between you and the Lord. Forgive. Forgive. Forgive the other person. Forgive the other person. You may need to write a note and say, I forgive my co-worker for, for, for saying bad things about me. You may need to forgive yourself. You may need to, to say, God, would you, God, I forgive myself for reacting in a way that compromised my witness at work. You need to release. You need to release that other person. You could say something like this. God, I release this person from ever having to make it right with me. I release them. God is reconciling the world to himself. God, would you reconcile this person to yourself? Release into God's hands for him to work. You know, God says vengeance is mine. He'll take care of that person much better than you think you can take care of that person. And then third, bless. Bless so that they may be liberated. Blessed so that they may be liberated. In the name of Jesus, I bless them to be healed in the deep places that have caused them to act this way. And dear Father, would you bless me? I bless, I bless myself right now to not react when people act like sinners. I bless myself to not react, but to respond in a way that is godly and right. I bless I believe forgiving others is going to change your life. I really do. I believe in my own life, you'll find that by forgiving. I did it this week to somebody. Two days ago, I was struggling with something. Last night, I prayed and I slept better. You'll sleep better if you forgive. You will love more powerfully. You will respond in relationships the way that you're supposed to. Have you ever been in a situation and you reacted in a way that's really not 
conducive to the situation at all, that's plugged into something that went, went on 20, 30 years ago. When you forgive, you will be able to respond correctly in relationships. You'll be able to love more powerfully, respond correctly, and you will be able, most of all, to have a deeper, intimate relationship with Jesus. As we conclude here today, if you need to know how to have a relationship with, with Christ and you don't, there's no way in the world you have the power to forgive. But first of all, it's not about forgiving others. It's about you receiving the forgiveness of God. And if you want to know how to do that, you can actually private message me and I'd love to walk through that. Maybe pick up the phone and we can just walk through this together. Maybe you can just pray a prayer right now where you are. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I've blown it. I receive the power of forgiveness in you, Jesus. Thank you for going to the cross for me and saving me. You can pray that right where you are. For others of you right now that have prayed that prayer, let's maybe say this right now together. This prayer, this, this prayer that has gone on for 2,000 years, Jesus teaches us how to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Dear Father, we thank you for this time that we spent with you. Thank you for these conversations that we've had with you over the last few weeks. And Lord, I pray as we look to Easter, that you remind us of the hope that we have in you. Not just a hope of resurrection so that we can go to heaven, but hope in you so that we have the power to be forgiven and to forgive others. The power to live daily this prayer that you've, you've given to us. Lord, I thank you so much for those that are listening right now. Lord, I pray that those that are struggling with this message may go deeper with you this week as they walk through this. Lord, I believe that you set us free. And Lord, I pray that, that maybe this week and maybe even right now in this moment, people will realize how much you love them and how much they've been forgiven. We thank you, Jesus. Amen.
Great. 
Praise our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. I want to take a moment to invite you to Easter service online at 1030 on April 12th. It's going to be a powerful time of real stories, music, and uh, really a message based upon the greatest story ever told. And I hope you could uh, gather with us at home and invite others to join you for an incredible experience. We have some stories of people that have given their lives to Christ. We're going to have that uh, during our Easter uh, online. Also, if you would join us for Good Friday, April 10th at 6.30, we're actually going to have a time of worship and remember the days leading up to Christ and His death. And we're going to take the Lord's Supper together. And uh, so I'm encourage you to get some bread and some, some red juice ready so that you can take the Lord's Supper with us. And I'll actually walk you through the Lord's Supper at 6.30 this coming Good Friday. I'm looking forward to spending the weekend with you online and we're praying for you.